All right, we're going to talk about the average rate of change. This is kind of a little introduction, like a like a baby version of the first major concept for the course, which is the derivative. Um, the derivative is all about how things change over time, and this is, you might say, a simple version, simpler version of the derivative. The average rate of change is um, pretty straightforward, not very complicated in the way that the derivative can be quite a bit more complicated. I thought as a way of introducing the topic, we could look at a real world uh, bunch of data. This is a bunch of data that I have compiled in a file, which you can click. I'm putting a link to it down in the old uh, YouTube description. Um, this is a bunch of numbers that I created myself when I was driving my car. Actually, I had, I had uh, my wife drive the car while I was sitting there and um, doing this little data collection exercise. So we went for a little drive, a little country drive, and I watched the odometer, like the mileage thing in the car. And uh, in this car, that thing ticked up every 0.1 miles. You would see it change to the, you know, the next higher. So every time I saw one of those little 0.1 go by, I would hit a button on my computer and it would record the time elapsed in seconds since we started the trip. So if you look at those numbers, you'll see a bunch of distances and a bunch of times, right? A bunch of times and uh, distances in mile. And all it is is whenever we hit, you know, mile uh, 3.7, um, I hit the button and it told you, uh, it told me how long the total trip time had been when I hit that mile 3.7. I would like to look at those numbers and answer some basic questions. All of this is more or less on the level of common sense. You don't have to know anything special about anything really to answer these questions as long as you understand very basic things about about speeds of, of things, uh, changing things. Anyway, let's look at those uh, numbers and as a first question I would like to ask what was my average speed over the first mile. All right, uh, you can look on the paper uh, and it says, you know, at time 22 seconds, I had gone 0.1 miles. At time 33 seconds, I had gone 0.2 miles. I wanna know what was my average speed over the first mile. Of, of course, the speed would be computed as a fraction with the distance divided by the time. You know, usually for cars, the speed is given in miles per hour, miles being the distance, hours being the time. So uh, all I have to do is over the first mile means how far did I go over the first mile divided by how long did it take me? So we do the distance over time, basically. Distance over time, right? And if you look on the chart, well, you don't have to look at the chart for this. What was my distance over the first mile? Over the first mile, the distance was one mile. So that's just gonna be a one. What about the time? How much time did it take for me to go the first mile? Cast your eyes on the chart, you will see mile one occurs at time 122, that's seconds. So this is 122. Now, this is the answer. This is the average speed over the first mile, although the units are weird here. This would be miles per second. Um, if you want to convert this to miles per hour, which is usually how we talk, although I didn't say, um, we would multiply. So if you want miles per hour, you'd multiply times 60 times 60. The first 60 will convert it to miles per uh, minute. And then the next 60 converts the minutes to hours. So this would be miles per hour. And if you plug that number into your calculator, which I did, I got 29.5 miles per hour and this seems reasonable right for a for a young gentleman driving along the street 29.5 miles per hour over the over a mile seems like a reasonable average speed yeah, same question but let's now ask what was my average speed over the second mile what was my average speed over the second mile um, well, we should be able to answer this uh, in the same way. The second mile, uh, if we look at our chart, um, well, let me just say, again, we want the distance over the time. And the distance, again, is just one mile, right? Uh, the Over the second mile, I mean just the second mile, not the whole first two miles, but just the second mile, what was my average speed 
over just the second mile. The distance of the second mile is still one mile. What about the time? How much time did it take for me to go the second mile? Well, you got to look down at the chart over there. How could you figure out the time? Well, the second mile began at time 122 and it ended at time 228. So how much time was that? Well, it was whatever this is, 228 minus 122, right? That many seconds is how long it took for me to drive the second mile. So this, again, would be miles per second, if this was your answer. Now you can subtract that. This is actually one over, what would that be? 106, right? This is miles per second. And again, to convert to uh, reasonable units, I multiply by 60 times 60. Now it's miles per hour. And this, I plug into my calculator, and I receive the answer of 33.9 miles per hour. All right, again, this is a reasonable figure for my average speed um, over the second mile, right? Average speed, you know what I mean by average speed? I mean, the average speed. Like sometimes I was going faster than this, sometimes I was going slower than this, but on average, that's how fast I was going um, during the second mile. All right, okay. I've asked two questions, very similar. We can answer them in a similar way. Um, you don't have to just say over this mile or over that mile. Let's do one more random question about the same data. All right, this is more of a contrived question. I don't know why you would want to ask this, but we could ask this if we want to. What's my average speed between these two times? Not the first hour or not the first mile or whatever. I'm saying between this moment, uh, 910 seconds, and this other moment, 959 seconds. All right, we're gonna do it the same way. We are, again, going to do the distance divided by the time, right? Um, this time, the time is, however, whatever the elapsed duration of time between those, it's just like the previous example we did. We subtract these two numbers, right? What about the distance elapsed between these? Well, you can look those distances up on the chart and the elapsed distance would be the difference of those two distances. So I'm going to look on the chart for the distance at 9.59 and I see 11.4 and then I subtract the distance at 9.10 and I see 10.6, all right? And now this is the average speed between this time and that time. These numbers, if you uh, put this into your calculator, just to, I mean, I don't really care what the, uh, what the answer ends up being, but uh, I did this in my calculator. I got 0.016 is what that fraction equals. This is miles per second. To convert to miles per hour, you multiply by 60 and then 60 again, you will see 58.7 miles per hour. All right, much faster. Actually, uh, when I was taking this little this little country drive, um, I got on the highway for some of it. So if you if you look carefully at these numbers, you will see there are t there are times portions of that time when I was driving much faster. Apparently, this was one of those times I was driving uh, a lot faster. All right, the average speed. Actually, this is generally what we're going to talk about when we talk about the average rate of change. Um, you know, rate of change in general is just about how fast something is changing. Um, we, in this example, have been talking about how fast a car is moving. That's the same as saying how fast the car's um, travel distance has changed, right? How fast the car is moving is the same as uh, asking about how, uh, how quickly it is you know, changing from one location to another location. It's all the same thing. So this, this business, this, this uh, type of reasoning is not good only for a car that's moving and measuring how fast the car is moving. You can use the same idea to measure how fast anything is changing, um, anything at all. So this is why actually when people ask me, uh, fairly often I meet people, you know, in the club or whatever, and they they I tell them I'm a math professor, and they uh, and they ask me what I teach, and I usually say, well, I teach uh, all kinds of things, but I teach a lot of calculus because like a lot of a lot of students need to take calculus, so we all uh, you know teach a lot of calculus here, and. Um, a lot of people ask me, this is a true story, a lot of people ask me, what? Uh, they, they're sort of embarrassed they have to ask this, but 
can you tell me like what even is calculus? Everybody's heard of calculus, but not a lot of people, you know, really know what it is. They just know like ah, I don't I don't want to talk about that. But some people want to know what it is. And my uh, my simple answer is usually calculus is about measuring how things change. Um, that's really what it is. And the average rate of change is like the, the very simplest way that you could think of measuring something about how fast something is changing. All right. It's like this. There's a general formulation of the average rate of change that works not just for how fast a car is moving, but it will work for how fast anything is changing. And it's always according to a formula like this. So if you look at this right here, let me say in more abstract terms, not using the specific numbers, but what we did here, we did sort of the, um, uh, we're subtracting things and making a fraction out of them. And what are the first thing and the second thing? They represent the, the distance and the other distance, right? This is like the second distance, and this is the first distance, if, if we're looking at these two times. What we have here is distance two minus distance one divided by time two minus time one, right? This is how you compute the average speed. Now, you don't have to do this just for a car moving fast. You can do this, like I said, for anything which is changing over time. Um, you would subtract the two times on the bottom and you would subtract the two anythings, whatever it is you're talking about. You would subtract them from each other on the top. So let's talk about this more abstractly then. We are interested in doing the average rate of change for any function. It could be a ordinary like mathematical function that you have defined in terms of some equations, or it could be just some function that you have like defined by a bunch of data values, like uh, like I said before. For any function, I'll call it f of x as usual. Um, here, here's a definition, right? We can define the average rate of change by a very simple formula. The average rate of change. You can think of this like an average speed, although it doesn't necessarily have to represent speed. The average rate of change, I'm gonna write this as average ROC means rate of change. Um, from, you always have two time points, right? From one point to another point, you find the average in the interval between this point and this point. So I'm gonna say the average rate of change from X equal A to X equal B is, and there's a formula for this, you think of a and b as the two times and you make this fraction it looks like just like we did before on the bottom you see one time subtracted uh, from the other and you you always do like the second one minus the first one so it would be b minus a on the bottom and on the top we want to see what in the previous example was the distance at b minus the distance at a now this is not necessarily a distance but it's just some function we say the function at b minus the function at a all right this is the formula for the average rate of change of some function from A to B. That's all. It's not a very hard formula to work with, right? You just plug numbers in, get a number as the answer, and that is the average rate of change. What is the average rate of change of this function, f of x equal x squared? from, uh, let's say, x equal 1 to x equal 2. If you know the formula for average rate of change, a question like this is always easy. What do you do? You just plug into the formula. This is the a, this is the b, right? The formula, remember, was f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So I'm going to do f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And what is that f of b? means you take this number and you plug it into the function. That would be two squared, right? Minus f of a means you take this number and plug it into the function. That's one, so this is one squared. Divided by, on the bottom, b minus a would be two minus one. And what is that? It's something, right? This is four minus one over two minus one is one. This is three, ain't it? And that's the answer. Three is the average rate of change. Um, what does this really mean? Well, it doesn't really mean anything uh, because this problem is not phrased in any kind of real world um, scenario. This is a, just an abstract function. You can use the formula and find the rate of change. Actually, 
This number three does represent something in terms of this abstract function. If we look at the graph, I'm gonna erase this, just remember the answer was three. Look at a graph of this function. It is uh, x squared, so everybody knows what x squared looks like. It looks like a parabola, like so. Now, I don't know if my, I don't know my, uh, how accurate my drawing is going to be, but you'll have to give me some grace on the, uh, on the geometry, the precise geometry. Anyway, from x equal one to x equal two, that number three, the average rate of change, actually you can see it on the graph. Um, from x equal one, x equal one is here, right? One. That's also 1, because 1 squared is 1. And then 2 is here. And uh, 2 squared is 4. That will be 4. Does that look about right? I guess so. Um, remember what that fraction looked like when we plugged into the uh, formula for the uh, rate of change? It looked like f of 2 minus f of 1 divided by 2 minus 1. Uh, I'm here to tell you, both of these numbers, you can actually see them on the picture. The bottom, 2 minus 1, is this distance right here, right? That's what the bottom represents on the picture. It's the distance between the two time values, all right? And then the top one, f of 2 minus f of 1, that would represent the distance between the two values of the function. That is the two y values. This, this here represents this distance there, this distance there, all right? And the answer is just the fraction. It's whatever fraction you get. We could take this distance divided by this distance. Actually, that has a name that I'm sure you're familiar with. I hope you're familiar with at least. Um, if I take this, these points and I just, let's kind of like, I'm gonna make a triangle out of these two distances. One, one point is there on the graph. The other point is here on the graph. And this distance, of course, is the same as this distance, right? And this distance here, you could also draw as that one there. All right, so what we're looking at here is the ratio of this thing, oh, sorry, this thing divided by this thing, right? How far did it go up divided by how far did it go over when you go from this point to this point? Anybody recognize that? This has a name. Uh, you might call this how much the uh, graph rose over this point this time period, and this is how much the uh, x values ran across this, uh, this time period. This actually, what we're talking about here, this, this distance here is f of two minus f of one. Can I say, like, in generally, I mean, this is that specific example, but in the formula, this would always be what f of b minus f of a looks like, and this right here is the um, b minus a part, right? And what is what is the what does this make when you take the fraction? It is the slope of this line. All right. So that's your interpretation from an abstract point of view of how to get like a mathematical handle on this average rate of change. The average rate of change represents the slope of this line between those two points. Now it's a, the actual function curves in between these two points. But if you were to just draw the straight line, the slope of that straight line is the average rate of change. I'm just going to write that down. This is kind of a deep fact about the average rate of change. The average rate of change from x equal a to x equal b is the slope of the line connecting the points on the graph. All right, the average rate of change turns out to equal the slope of the line that connects those two points on the graph. So if I have, say, a function that looks like this, and I wanna know what's the average rate of change from here to here, it would be the slope of that line, uh, which looks like, I don't know, negative a half maybe, like it, you can't say exactly what that is, but you can, you can kind of eyeball what that slope is. Remember, uh, slope 45 degrees down would be negative one slope. This is not quite that steep, so I, that's why I said negative a half. All right, the average rate of change is the slope connecting those two points on the graph. This is kind of a deep thought, and this is what's gonna lead into um, the kinds of thoughts that we have to think about, the more complicated concepts in calculus. The key observation though, is somehow making a relationship between how something is changing, which is hard to analyze if you don't have any handle on it, 
relate that to some kind of geometric idea, the slope of something that we actually do know how to get a handle on. All right, we'll do a lot more next time.